Can cookie cutters be a fun new acrylic pouring tool? Let's keep experimenting. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. Over the last couple of videos, we've been playing with the new technique where I notch a cup or other hollow object and let paint flow out through the notches. In the last video, we notched this flower-shaped cookie cutter, and I ended by saying it would be fun to try a star shape. Well, that's what we're going to do today. I took a polypropylene star-shaped cookie cutter and made notches in the five points to allow the paint to escape. And I'm going to try a ring pour, puddle pour combo right down the middle of this star and see what happens. Before we jump in, let's take a quick look at how the last painting dried. Once again, even though I left a lot of paint on the canvas, we had no major problems. No cracks and a teeny tiny amount of crazing that I actually quite like. There's a little bit right there. You can see some throughout the edging here. And again, throughout some of the breakup here. And that's really basically it as far as crazing goes. The sides turned out really nice and fun. The colors stayed nice and rich and the fine details of the inner rings really survived the drying process beautifully. What I'm most excited about are these awesome white feathery things that I really hope I get to recreate in another pour. I think they're just awesome. I love how it has sort of like this veil look to it on the edges. I love that. And this feathering, oh, to die for. Since we've been okay with leaving a lot of paint on the canvas, I'm going to do very minimal tilting in today's pour, I think, because I'm hoping that the star shape survives when I lift up the cookie cutter. And if it does, I want to keep it. Well, at least I think I do. <laughs> I reserve the right to change my mind because you know it could happen. <laughs> I just, I'm just putting it out there. Chances are what I think I want right now will be completely different once I see the pour. But my goal going in is to maintain the star. But let's see. Okay, all right, are we ready? Let's do this. For my colors, I removed blue and purple. I love those colors, but they have taken over the last three paintings. They are like aggressive little bullies. <laughs> and they just knock every other color out of the way. So I want to give these five colors a chance to actually make an appearance and be seen by the world. So I'm going to use Peacock Teal Sour Apple, Cadmium Yellow, Jack-O-Lantern Orange, and Royal Fuchsia. And hopefully they will all have their moment in the sun. <laughs> I am sticking with the DecoArt Americana paints for this because I'm really enjoying their paint. And I am definitely sticking with the pouring medium because this stuff has been saving my paintings. Regardless of the amount of paint that I have left on the canvas, when I set it out to dry, it has not given me grief. So because there is a chance I'm going to have more paint on the canvas and I've had even up to this point, I'm going to stretch it a little bit more and have my mix be three parts pouring medium, one part paint. The paints have enough pigment in them, they can handle it. And I just 
think I'm going to need a little extra pouring medium to keep myself from having any issues because if I don't want to tilt that much, things could go bad. So I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. <laughs> All right. I have made up a dirty cup using the colors and I'm going to spread myself a good layer of white paint. That should do me. I want to make sure I have a good amount in the corners and in the middle where the star will sit. I don't need so much in the dead middle because I'll be pouring paint there, but where the paint's going to escape, I want it to escape into a good amount of paint. And I want to make sure that I have some running off the edges so that if the paint makes it to that corner, that it flows nicely. I think I'm good. Now to position the star. I'm hoping that's good. Like I said, I'm gonna start out with a puddle pour type thing first, and then take it to the ring pour. That way, hopefully, I have some sort of ring thing happening. A little bit anyway we'll see trying to be as centered about this as I can but it still flows the way it wants to regardless of how level or how centered uh, <laughs> you just can't get things to go your way I don't know that I want a whole heck of a lot of white but enough A little more yellow. Oh, some paint finally escaping. Woohoo! Just a little bit in some corners there. I'm gonna wait a little bit and let it let it do its thing before continuing because what happens is the paint mounds up here because it can't flow out as quickly as it might otherwise because it only has these five little openings to come out so the paint sits up in the middle here for a while slowly waiting its turn to ooze out maybe a little bit more the escape is really pretty I'm psyched about that. All right, I am going to attempt the pour now. See what happens when we do that. And what I'm also going to do is spin as I pour so that the colors are more evenly dispersed. Because what happens when you do a ring pour is that colors go like halfway one way and then halfway another way so I'm wondering if I spin it as I pour if it'll go out in a more uniform way I'm gonna stop there for a minute and see what happens I like it so far. It's pretty cool. But it does say, tilt me, tilt me. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> oh my gosh. I haven't even, I haven't even gotten the paint all out. There's still paint in the cup and I'm already wanting to tilt. It's so bad. <sighs> These are like really cool shells. Oh my gosh. I love this so much. See, 
These would be so neat tilted. Ah, dang it. <laughs> there is no way. Huh. What if I tilted while holding the star in place? Huh. Because I really want to stretch these guys out, but I want the star to stay. Decisions, decisions. And I still have at least another ounce left in the cup. Oh, man, oh, man. So much to think about. But how cool are these rings? Oh, man. Well, I have to at least finish the pour. So let's do that. And I'm gonna continue that spinning action to even out the distribution of the colors. I'm gonna stop for a second so that you can see it kind of makes a swirl in the center. That's really neat. Oh, I'm loving everything about this. Okay, now what if we do a puddle in that? And then more of the pour. Okay, this is crazy fun. All right, that's the end of that. Oh, I mean, this is the epitome of psychedelic. I can't even, there is no tilting that can happen here because that is just too awesome and cool. I must maintain that. Of course, now I'm terrified of lifting the ring or the cookie cutter. Do you see the zigzagginess there? Oh my God. So spinning definitely adds an extra fun dimension to this. Let's see if I spin it. If that'll help spread it a little bit more. It does. While still maintaining the star. That's the secret. See, I'm leaving the star in the center. I'm not lifting it. So I'm just spinning this. So that this gets spread out. I don't want to fling it off all over the place. Just to get them to the edges. I think I'm gonna stop there, you guys. Don't you think? I am happy. It spilled over beautifully. And I think that by doing the spin as I poured everything, I managed to get all the, the petals, if you will, to be even, which I think was lacking in previous attempts of this. So now all I'm doing is making sure that the paint has spilled over evenly on the edges, especially the white, so that I don't have any weird ridge line on the corners, because that never looks good. And yes, notice how I have still not lifted the cookie cutter. <laughs> I am letting this paint settle as much as I possibly can before I do that. I'm going to do that at the very last second to hopefully maintain the star. All right, I've cleaned up the sides 
and it is time to lift this cutter because I have to put this guy to bed. Okay, I have crossed my fingers, my toes, my eyes, <laughs> everything possible. Uh, uh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, an angel sang. Okay, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. I'm leaving it just like that. And nothing else is going to happen. I don't know that it's going to survive. I don't know how it'll spread, but it won't be because I did something to it. <laughs> ah. Let's take a look at this psychedelic stunner. Remember to subscribe for more of these fun experiments and more. Okay, I think this turned out amazing. I can't wait to see what we get when it dries. Cross your fingers and your toes. I didn't have to tilt, thank goodness. What I chose to do instead was use centrifugal force by spinning the canvas a little not so hard that paint would fly off the canvas, just enough to spread out the petals. When I started developing this notched cup and notched cookie cutter technique, I had high hopes, but I am loving it now. And I'm super curious to hear what you are thinking. Give this a thumbs up if you're enjoying this new technique and are interested in more variations. Are you going to try it? If yes, Please post pictures in my Facebook group to show off your work and inspire others. Consider becoming a patron of this channel so that you have access to exclusive videos and more. Thank you to those of you that have contributed and sent me happy mail from my wish list. Thank you to those of you remembering to use any of my links to get you to Amazon right before completing a purchase. I am so blessed to have you as viewers. You are amazing and so much fun to get to know. Please say hi in the comments. I read them all. Okay, I think we have to try this with silicone now, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Go let your creative natures shine. Thank you so much for spending time with me. See you on Saturday. Bye now.